Today we're going to look at one of the most classic approximations of pi. And that approximation comes from the following integral. So we've got the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the 4th times 1 minus x to the 4th over 1 plus x squared. So what I'd like to do today is to work through all of the details evaluating this integral and seeing why it's a good approximation of pi, and then after which we'll maybe generalize this integral to a family and look at one other example. Okay, so this is a rational function. We've got a polynomial in the numerator and the denominator. And notice that the degree of the numerator, well, it's a degree eight polynomial. We can see that because this is degree four, and then the other term is also degree four. It needs to be multiplied out though. And then the denominator is degree two, and any time that the degree of the denominator is less than or equal to the degree of the numerator, you generally need to do some sort of polynomial long division before you do your evaluation. So let's do just that. So let's maybe start here with the denominator. We've got x squared plus one, and we're dividing that into the numerator. And I'm gonna just write it down multiplied out using the fact that I know how to multiply one minus x all to the fourth by the binomial expansion formula. So this is gonna give us x to the eight minus four times x to the seven plus six times x to the sixth minus four times x to the five and then plus x to the four. And that's of course after multiplying the x to the four through. Okay, so now let's do our polynomial long division. So we need to determine what we multiply to x squared to give us an x to the eighth power. Well, that's pretty clearly an x to the six. So let's see, now distributing that through, we'll have an x to the eight here, and then we'll have a plus x to the six here. And then, well, the trick here is we wanna group these terms and then subtract them. So observe that that's going to have the effect of canceling the x to the 8 and then bumping the 6x to the 6 down to a 5x to the 6. Then bringing the rest of the terms down, we're going to have 4x to the 7 plus 5x to the 6. And then, well, like I said, bringing those down, well, those are obviously going to stay the same. Okay, great. Then next up, well, what do we need to multiply to x squared to give us 4x to the 7th or negative 4x to the 7th? Well, that's pretty clear, negative 4x to the fifth. So bringing that down, we're gonna have negative 4x to the seventh. And then, well, let's see, we're gonna have also negative 4x to the fifth for multiplying it through to the one. Okay, so now let's group and subtract. But what's notice, what's really nice here is that both of these terms cancel. Whereas up here, only the top term canceled. So that's cool. And then bringing down what's left over, we have 5x to the 6, and then plus x to the 4th. Then, well, we need to multiply by 5x to the 4th. So let's see, that's going to give us a 5x to the 6 plus a 5x to the 4th. Again, you know, doing what we've been doing, group and subtract, observe that we're gonna be left with a negative 4x to the fourth left over because the 5x to the sixth terms cancel. And then here we're gonna have a minus 4x squared. So that's gonna give us minus 4x to the fourth minus 4x squared. And then another round of grouping and subtracting leaves us with a 4x squared. And then pretty clearly what goes here is a plus four. So that's gonna give us a 4x squared plus four, meaning the remainder is a negative four. Okay, so well, let's recall whenever you do a division with the remainder, that turns our improper fraction, if you will, into the quotient plus the remainder over the divisor. So let's write that down. So we have the integral from zero to one of the quotient. So x to the sixth minus four x to the fifth plus five x to the fourth minus four x squared 
plus four, and then plus the remainder over the divisor, but that's gonna turn into minus four over x squared plus one. Okay, great. And then from here, we simply take the antiderivative and then plug you know, the top and the bottom term in. So that shouldn't be too hard. We'll have one seventh for this term. I'm actually gonna skip the taking the antiderivative. Notice that's really gonna be one seventh x to the seven. Plugging in one gives us a seventh, plugging in zero gives us zero. In fact, plugging in zero to all of the antiderivatives give us zero. So all we have to do is worry about plugging in one. So that's gonna give us minus four x to the six over six. And then, well, evaluating that at one will give us four over six, which is also known as two over three. And then for this next term, we'll have plus one because the antiderivative of five x to the fourth is simply x to the fifth. And then we'll have a minus four over three from the antiderivative of that next term. And then let's see, the last one will be plus a four and then minus, oh, well that's gonna be four times the inverse tangent, but the inverse tangent evaluated at one is pi over four. So that's gonna be minus pi. Okay, great. Oh, but now notice that we've got a rational number minus pi. Putting all of those rational numbers together, that gives us 22 over seven minus pi. Okay, well, that should maybe look kind of familiar because this is a very classic rational approximation to pi, that 22 over seven. And we got it from doing that integral well that we just spent a bunch of time doing. So now the question is, how good of an approximation is this? And well, we can kind of answer that question or partially answer that question by finding maybe some upper and lower bounds for this integral. So let's do that. So I'm gonna put our integral right in the middle. So we've got the integral from zero to one of x to the fourth, one minus x all to the fourth over one plus x squared dx. So on the one hand, that's 22 over seven minus pi. But that's gonna be clearly bigger than or equal to and clearly less than or equal to something. So observe that it's gonna be clearly bigger than or equal to what we would have if the denominator were always two, which is the largest the denominator can be given that we're integrating from zero to one. So that'll give us a half and then the integral from zero to one of x to the fourth and then one minus x all to the fourth dx. And then it's gonna be less than or equal to what we would get if the denominator were the smallest it could possibly be, which is when x is zero giving it the denominator of one. So here we've got the integral from zero to one of x to the fourth one minus x all to the fourth dx. And now all that remains is to take those antiderivatives, plug in uh, zero and one. But notice that that's essentially just the same thing as what's expanded out here in this purple box. So in fact, you would get something like one over nine x to the ninth evaluated from zero to one and then so on and so forth. So I won't go through the calculation, but that's gonna end up giving us the number one over 1,260 on the lower end. So again, that's just from taking integrals and putting fractions together. And then on the upper end, we're gonna have one over 630. So obviously this is half of what we have on the upper end, given that those integrals are exactly the same. But now here what we can do is isolate the pi in the middle and we have the following. So pi is gonna be bigger than 1979 over 630 and it's gonna be less than 3959 all over 1260. And now in order to get an idea of how good that approximation is, well, 
we can simply take the length of the interval. So the top term minus the bottom term. So let's do that. So we'll have 3959 nine over 1260 minus, well, I'm gonna give this a common denominator. So that's gonna give us 3958 over 1260. Oh, well, observe that that almost all the way cancels down to one over 1260. So that's the length of the interval. But really the error is half that because pi could at most be half the distance of the interval from either of these endpoints. So that means we could maybe sneak in right here our max error of this approximation to be, let's see, one over, well, what's gonna be 1260 times two? I believe that's gonna be 2520. So that's a fairly small error. Okay, so now that being said, let's now look at maybe a generalization of this method. Okay, so here's a summary of what we just did. That's classic approximation for pi. And now, well, let's generalize this. And we can generalize this by tweaking this exponent right here. And so the generalization will lead us to the following inequality of integrals. So we'll have one half times the integral from zero to one of x to the four n times one minus x to the four n dx is less than or equal to the integral from zero to one of x to the four n one minus x to the four n over one plus x squared and then bound above by, well, essentially what we have down here without the half. So we'll have the same thing exactly. Now I'd like to jump to an example of what we get for a fairly small value of n. So let's maybe take n equal to three. And in fact, what we get is pi lies between the following two rational numbers. And as you can see, those rational numbers are really not worth saying out loud. Let's see, we've got a three, six, a 10 digit rational number in the numerator, and well, another 10 digit rational number in the denominator. But that being said, well, I did the calculation in Mathematica, and you'll see that the difference of these two rational numbers is less than 10 to the minus 10, meaning that the error is gonna be, well, less than that at, as well. And that's a good place to stop.